At the LEAD Summit, we had the opportunity to speak with civil rights activist Sylvia Mendez, who with other families helped fight for the equal rights in education. We asked Ms. Mendez about her message to the event's attendees. Dr. Murillo heard me speak in Georgia, and I was giving the same message I gave today. And that's, that was about education and how important it is that our students stay in school. And it all, it's all, and my, my story is my legacy about Mendez versus Westminster, about how Latinos fought for education in 1940. 43, 44, 45, 46, and 47, they won integration for, the, for California. And a lot of people aren't aware that Latinos have been fighting all their lives for education. And it happened even in 1930 in a case called the Lemon Grove uh, Court case where uh, Latinos were fighting for equal rights in, in education. Ms. Mendez explains the historic case, Mendez versus Westminster. When I was eight years old, I was denied entry into a school, into a white school, and my father, Gonzalo Mendez, and my mother, Felicitas Mendez, fought, and they won in a case called Mendez versus Westminster. And they didn't only fight for me, they fought for 5,000 Latinos. And it wasn't only my mother and father, it was Jose, it was Guzman, Palomino, Estrada, and Ramirez were the other four plaintiffs, and my father, Gonzalo Mendez. And it, was, and it wasn't only Latinos fighting, it was everybody coming together. It was the Jewish Congress, it was the NACP, it was the Civil Liberty, it was the Lawyers Guild. Everybody came in and helped in the Mendez case. So it was uh, all, all nationalities, ethnic groups came together to right a wrong. And that wrong was that we were being segregated in schools and that we did not have equal education. Ms. Mendez reflects on her life's mission and passion to educate our community. What happened was that as I started to go out and tell the story, because I felt that Latinos needed to know they had brave, courageous Latino leaders that they weren't aware of, I found out that we were more segregated now than we were in 1947, that we have now what we call de facto segregation. What they thought was de jure desegregation, de jure desegregation is they segregated us by law. Now we have de facto segregation, and that is caused by so many e evils like demographics, politicians, uh, politics, uh, the class, richer are getting richer, the poor, poorer, and people want to stay in the same area, so they stay in the same area and they go to, to schools where the population might be 100% Latinos. We have two schools named after my mother and father, Gonzalo and Felicitas Mendez, and both of them are 99, 100% Latino. So that means that we are back to where we were in a greater and bigger scale that of segregation. So. What I go around and talk about is about how important education is, and I know that it's gonna take time to get rid of the effect of segregation, but I still don't want the students to feel that they cannot succeed in school. Even in the school that's segregated in Santana, it is doing very well, and it was uh, classified as one of the best schools there in the area. So it doesn't matter sometimes. It matters in, a, in different ways, but it doesn't need to, keep the students from succeeding and going on to college.